Here's what a normal chest x-ray looks like. It can look intimidating at first, but coming up with a systematic way of reading your x-rays can help simplify things for you. So, over the next few videos in the coming weeks, we're going to review how to read the chest x-ray. So let's start with some basic anatomy that you'll need to know going forward. Here's the trachea, typically in the middle and branching into the left and right main stem bronchi. Normally, you'll see a steeper right bronchus compared to the left. Next, you'll see the lungs. The right lung is divided into three lobes by the horizontal fissure and the oblique fissure. The left lung is divided into two lobes also by an oblique fissure. When I'm assessing the lungs, I also look at the surrounding pleura and then the diaphragms on both sides. The diaphragms should have a curved shape to them and sharp costophrenic angles. The right diaphragm should be higher than the left because of the liver. And on the left, sometimes you could see a gastric bubble, which you could see here underneath the left diaphragm. If you look closely in the lung fields, they're not completely black. You will see fine strands of white in them all the way to the edges of the lungs. These are the pulmonary vascular markings and will come in handy later when looking for things like pneumothoraces or a collapsed lung. Let's go over the bones next. I usually start with the clavicles to see if they're equidistant from each other, which is important in determining rotation of the x-ray that you're looking at. You may also notice the manubrium between each clavicle. Here are your scapula and humerus on the right and left side. Notice that you don't see the scapula overlapping your lung fields. That's because properly obtained plane films should have your scapula out of the lung field views so that your lungs are unobstructed by layers of bone and soft tissue. The next set of bones I look at are the ribs. I usually quickly count them off myself, since this will give me an idea of whether or not the patient had enough inspiration when the x-rays were obtained to get the most optimal view of the lungs. Lastly for your bones, in the middle you will see the vertebrae and spinous processes. Note that you could even see the vertebrae behind the heart, which signifies adequate penetration of your film. And finally, let's go over the heart. It typically lies to the left of the patient, and should be less than 50% of the thoracic diameter. Here, you'll see the superior vena cava adjacent to the aortic arch. Flanking the heart, you will see pulmonary vasculature spreading out into the lungs. And here, you will see the chambers of the heart. Here's the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and left ventricle. So that's it. That's the basic overview of the anatomy of the chest x-ray. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you'll get updates on when we release the newest videos on how to read a chest x-ray. Lastly, if you're loving these videos, share them with your friends on social media or leave comments below. And if you want to show more love or are feeling very generous, I'd really appreciate it if you check out MedSchool's Patreon page and make a donation to help me bring you more awesome content more often. If not, that's okay. We'll still be creating great videos for you, so be sure to check back in the coming weeks for updates on our How to Read a Chest X-ray series.